Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. Welcome to the third edition of Sound Bites. I'm Jennifer Biggs with The Daily Memphian. Today we have a wonderful guest. It's somebody everyone knows, everyone loves. Karen, thank Yay. you so much for joining me today. I'm excited. How you doing? I'm fine. How about you? I'm doing well. Business is good. Business is good for you. Business has been good. Not all, all things considered, right? Yes. Yeah. Everything considered. Yes. It, um, I've been in several times. I've come to Hazel's. I've come to Beauty Shop. I've sat out back. I've sat out front. I've been to different <laughs> different services and uh, different services that makes it sound like church. I mean, I've been to brunch. I've been it to is dinner, church. I've been to, that's right. <laughs> it is my it, church. <laughs> your brunch is. You're right. You have a harder time getting uh, in there for Sunday morning. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, and, and it's been good to see that corner just completely come alive again when yeah. you when you came back, brought everything back uh, like it should be. So tell me something we talked about this weekend when I was in. Um, you're thinking about starting lunch again at Beauty Shop, right? I am. I've been really thinking about it. And, you know, <clears throat> for the first, yeah, I never thought about it because I felt like everybody was still in their homes and not really going out for lunch. And, you know, even to go, I started to go lunches for a week and realized that was a joke. So I closed that down after the first week in March and just did dinners and Sunday brunch. And, but for the last two weeks, we've had a lot of people walking up to the beauty shop and like pulling on the door and, you know, we're bringing stuff out to the people sitting outside and, and they're like, oh, is the beauty shop closed? And we're like, yeah, we haven't opened yet, but we are considering and we've been getting a lot of calls. So now we think, OK, maybe it is time. Now the logistics is how do I do that with Lucky Dice? Do I put dice in on the menu as a as a little area and then have everything run out of the beauty shop and maybe all the to-go still coming out of DK. So what that, do you do? So when when is this decision going to be made? When are you planning to do well, it? Well, we're probably if we open, we're gonna have the same crew that we're using for Lucky Dice, which is good because we have a whole kitchen crew now. Everybody came back. That's fine as far as in the daytime. That was the reason I opened Lucky Dice, Jennifer. Once their stimulus ran out and we were supplementing them with our PPP, we offered everybody the same thing they were getting with their stimulus and their unemployment. If they came back, that's what we would pay them. And they were like, yeah, we'll come back. And that's how everybody came back except for one waiter and one kitchen person. So that's how it worked. And so once the stimulus ran out, we supplemented everybody till the end of July. Once that ran out, our lunch people that were working Saturday and Sunday brunch they didn't have any more shifts. So I was like, oh my God, we've got to do something. So I wanted to do this deli and it just worked out that I did the deli and my lunch crew got their full-time employment. Employment, They're sustainable now and that's how it works. So now maybe in the next two weeks, we're thinking about opening. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out what's the best time. Do you think that maybe people are showing up for lunch more now that it's cooled off a little bit too? I think that, and I also think they're feeling more comfortable with going out. I think, you know, it's been since what, a lot of people opened May 4th, I opened June 7th, you know, it's already going into November. So we've had the whole summer for everybody to just sort of get their sea legs back on either going out or sitting outside or going back into a restaurant situation. And I think they're more comfortable now, but I'm seeing a lot of medical people come up, um, you know, they have their badges on, whether it's St. Jude or Le Bonner and, you know, but they're coming in as groups trying to open that door. And so I, I think maybe, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's time. Well, now, of course, you, but we'll see. I know that you're at the restaurant a lot. So yeah. I'm not, I know you're not going out to dinner a whole lot, no. but are you going to restaurants at all? The only, <laughs> that's funny. You should ask the week before last was the first restaurant I went to, which was Kelly's. I went in to Iris. I wanted to taste the 
Spanish cuisine. I was, it was lovely. It was an incredible night. It was the first time I had the, I had everything. I had the whole, all the appetizers. <laughs> I had the cod. I had the cod the, was great. The cod great? was fantastic. Love it. Um, we had the chicken was fantastic. It was very soulful. And I've been to Barcelona and I, you know, I, I love Spanish food, but I had four people with me. None of us had been out to eat. Eat. And so we sat outside and it was just, it was the perfect night and the perfect situation. And it, it was just lovely. And it was so nice to get out, you know, so that was good. And then last week I wanted to um, support Bari. So me and Steve Ann and Devin went to and sat outside um, on the sidewalk and it was great. It was really, really nice. And so I think once a week, I'm going to try to go and feel like a real person and uh, go enjoy myself. Well, I know you used to go a lot. You travel to eat. You would, yeah. I mean, a lot of restaurateurs do that, of course. I but do. one thing I would say for people listening, if you're not going out to eat yet, if you're still feeling a little uneasy about it, do go outside. It's a really nice way to ease into it. Incredible. It's so nice. And truly, to be honest with you, and I know this is crazy to say because I own restaurants, but I, I haven't gone inside anywhere, Mm -hmm. but you know, I have a lot of people to protect. I have all my employees and I'm really, really conscientious about that. So when I'm not at the restaurant, I'm at home. Yeah. Well, it's safer outside. We know that, but we also know winter's coming and uh, we know we could be so dire and say winter is coming and do the whole (laughs) game of thrones thing but i think i think that's been overdone we know it's it's coming and you've got plans anyway to try to keep people warm and stay outside so so tell us because we've talked about some and you told me right before we sat uh down here that you were excited about what you've come up with well, you know, last week you and I talked and you wrote a piece in the Daily Memphian and, and I was looking at, you know, I'm always going back to my New York days and, and I have a lot of friends still there and they're sending me stuff a lot. Okay, oh, and check out how this place opened and look what they're doing on the streets of Brooklyn and in this in Manhattan. And so there was a place, La Mercerie, and it was beautiful. They had created these little rooms outside, so to speak, but they weren't completely enclosed. And I thought, well, I could maybe do like little beauty rooms. But then I woke up and I think it was like two nights after you and I talked, it was last Thursday night. So at 3.30 in the morning, I woke up, I got online, I started looking at greenhouses and I ordered five greenhouses for the front patio. There'll be five of them all the way across the front. They're polycarbonate, they're aluminum, they weigh 70 pounds. They're a beautiful Kelly green with glass in them. They have a door, they have a little window that opens on the top, going to have heaters lights and you're going to be able to sit outside all during the winter all completely quarantined and then we're going to order two there's six by four and a half then we're going to order two six by eights for the back deck so we have the geodesic domes we'll have two of the six by eights that fit the longer tables and then we're going to enclose the area under the bar where you sit sometimes at the thatch roof. right um we're going to enclose that with um sun umbrella and some heaters and um, because it's pretty much you've got that overhang we just have to enclose three sides that would be nice we'll be set we'll be set really cozy yeah under that little thatch thing I like that and we have the little heaters out this weekend and we have little heaters next underneath that bar right now and people loved it was a beautiful night Friday and Saturday night it was beautiful well, Friday night would have been a bit chilly for me to eat out. Of course, yeah. we ate indoors on Saturday, too. I, I would, I yeah. probably would have gone outside Saturday, but Friday, right. I don't know. That might have been much. A little much cold, but we had those heaters going and people loved it, you know? We were okay with that then. We were okay with it, yeah. I think that, well, I think anybody, I think careful people are going to be. And some people, honestly, Karen, you know, I mean, there have been people who would rather be inside this, this summer eat because they didn't like the heat. And that's, that's you know. True. No, it's true. It's absolutely true. And the only air conditioners we had were under or under the geodesic domes. But um, I think we're having a long fall and I think we're very lucky. And I think, you know, every restaurateur and chef needs to take advantage of that right now and put those seats on the sidewalk, whatever. And, they have. and the word is uh, the this winter's uh, La Nina is going to bring a mild southern winter. See, there were some places are going to have it hard, but yeah. we're going to have it mild. That's going to be great because it could be warm in December. I'm excited. I think it, it could, could be. be. I mean, yeah. it could say, you know how, I mean, sometimes we can go 
a long way and, and stay warm. Oh, absolutely. And then, and you know, by the time it does get cold, hopefully we'll have a little relief too. Who's to say what's right. going to happen with that? Well, also, and who's to say what's going to happen with this pandemic? Because we know it's going to come. I mean, Paris has already gone on a nine o'clock curfew. Um, that's happening in Spain. It's happening in Italy. And so I think we're the next place to have it. I do believe it's going to happen again. I do. Well, London's on high alert. And as we were talking last week, you know, of course, planes planes continue to fly and uh, it, it will come. Of course, it's going to come. But encouraging news today, this is Monday when I, when we're talking, the, um, you know, the, the rate in the New York schools uh, today, the testing, it, it was phenomenally low, like only oh, 10 that's cases great. or something. So that's fantastic today. Really and, great. Yeah, that is. That's, uh, you, it can change, but that's good news for for this day. So let's, you know, we just have to go like that. Oh, absolutely. Day by day. And, and y'all, have, you don't have problems, I think, at all, do you, with people like not wanting to wear a mask or anything like that? Oh, well, we've had, you know, everybody has their problems. I mean, there's, I had a situation and I can't say who it is. It's a very public person was uh, Saturday night. And of all people, I mean, they own a lot of something in the city and they came in and, and they were standing outside. I said, oh, you know, good to see you, you got to put on your mask. You don't have masks for us. I was like, no, I don't. And this they were like, Saturday night, Saturday night. Yeah. And uh, it was right, right. <laughs> Right before you were getting there, you were there, you were trying to park, whatever, and uh, pay to park, and um, it was happening. And, oh, darn. And so, yeah, it was it was quite interesting. And so the people they were with, anyway, they ended up, they had some extra masks, you know, but it, it was shocking that there are people who come with no mask. They come and expect you to give them a mask. Yeah, and I usually we have masks, but... You know, during the day on Saturday day, they had given out the last of our masks and we didn't go by anymore. And, you know, sometimes we do have masks and that's not a problem. We just did, we didn't have any. But it is it's, you know, people need to to really get on board and know when they're coming to a restaurant, whether they're sitting outside or inside, they have to. It's respectful for themselves and for our staff and for the rest of the people that are that are eating out and dining out. And, you know, no matter politically what people say <laughs> you need to wear a mask well frankly they need to have masks anyway because you could be stopping anywhere you Absolutely. could be going to the grocery store you could have an accident a car accident have to get out of your car exactly right i can't imagine not having you know i have I have an arsenal of masks just yeah. about everywhere we do usually have some extra masks there you know and, and needless to say somebody always says oh can i put my sweater over my face and I and said sorry no you can't that they go well that's what do you consider a mask I said what we have on it's a mask and you know there's look at this point even have a scarf and tie it around that's fine you know I can deal with that um I know there's a lot of rules now and I know that you know we're it, it, but we have to do what we have to do. You know, the health department wants us to have the contact tracing. That's fine. I respect that. I respect anything that stops or keeps us healthy and keeps my staff and my clientele in a good place. But I just need everybody to respect each other. That's all. But the mask is not a new rule. This really surprises me. I'm really, I'm, and I'm also really disappointed with myself that I, I was having trouble with the little parking machine and the driver's well, license. Everybody had trouble with that. I, I know it. What was the deal? I don't know. But I mean, thank God he opened up the parking lot. But for some reason, it's really hard to, you know, I don't know. It, it was the longest lines waiting to people trying to get their well, credit what happened to me was I paid and I knew that my, I knew my tag number. So that was fast and easy, but then it asked for your cell phone number. And I thought, well, that's just optional. So I didn't put it in, but then it canceled. And so oh, then I had to start well. over and yeah, do it all again. That's awesome. Well, and it, so it can text you and tell you that your time is running out. Oh, right. Did, that's so. good. <laughs> yeah. that's Which good. would be great if it was like one of the places where you could just say add more time, but I don't even exactly. think it did that. No, I think it was just letting me know. But but anyway, that, that that seemed to be the key for me is once I put in the cell phone number that I was able to pay. But there was a line, you're right. Oh yeah. Definitely. Everybody was waiting. But it was a lovely meal. It always is. How yeah. do you keep that place going and so alive and so I mean it's just 
still as energetic as it was 17, 18, 17, 18 years ago? How long, how many years now? Hard to believe, but it's uh, 18, nine, it's months, 19 years. 19? Mm. Wow. It was 2017 when we had our 15 year. So actually it's, yeah. Yeah, 15, 16, 17, no, 18, 18 years. Crazy, 18, 19, what do I know? I don't know, I'm getting older by the minute. <laughs> it's well, hard to believe we opened in 2002 because I had Slims for 17 years from 91 to 2008 when I sold it during the craziness of that financial time. And also one of my grill chefs had been murdered. I was, I had, I had done my deed downtown and I was ready to go. But, you know, we did, it was downtown when we first got there was amazing. It was truly incredible. And selling Slims was tough because Slims was my big baby. It's sort of what got us our start. You know? I'm going to step back for just a second and tell people this and then you can pick up. Yeah. But, uh, you actually opened your first restaurant, which was Automatic Slims in New York City. So you're yes. from Memphis, yes. but you went to and you weren't you didn't plan to be a restaurateur. It's a great little story. Tell people how you ended up. You can tell all the details you want. <laughs> I love the details on how you ended up doing this. Well, I tell you, I went to New York to go to graduate school as a painter, and I had a scholarship. But the scholarship did not afford me back then in 1980 enough money to live. So I had to find a way to make a living. I had a really good friend, Sarah Jane Foster, who some people really still know from. She was from Humboldt, and she worked at... Uh, Sir Roberts, which was prior to Half Shell. Anyway, she went to New York and she went to a restaurant school. It was the New York Restaurant School on 34th Street. And she was a good friend. And then she got a job with Martha Stewart right when she got out. She called me. She goes, you're coming to New York. I was like, yeah, I need some work. And she goes, well, go to this restaurant school. It's six week intensive, hands on, six days a week. So I signed up and I did it before I went to grad school. And I loved it. So anyway, started grad school in January, went, moved to New York in June and did that six week intensive course. She gets me a job with Martha Stewart, her first cookbook, which was entertaining. And I'm out in her place in Connecticut. And the first job I have is grilling smelts. That was my job for, for the press. Well, if you've ever grilled smelts on a rental grill, those rental grill grates are really large. And those smelts are like, they're ridiculous. They're like a yeah, finger. Never they grilled smelts in, in my life. Right. They're like an anchovy. Right. And so, so they kept falling in and Martha was not very happy with me. So I said, well, would you move me to the smokehouse? Which you know, I love being in a smokehouse. Whether I'm smoking something, I just like being in a smokehouse. And so she made me to the smokehouse. I was happy. End of story. I ended up starting, I met this girl in the bathroom of the Lone Star cafe and Stevie Ray Vaughan was playing and I'm in the bathroom. This is a true story. I and love this story. <laughs> this story. Yeah, so I, I smell somebody smoking a joint and I kicked open the stall and there are all these girls in there and I'm like, Hey, what's going on? And they were like, well, get out of the stall. And so I come out of the stall and we start introducing ourselves. And one girl was from Austin, Texas. I'm from Tennessee. And she, she said, well, what are you doing? I said, oh, I just finished this course at this cooking school. She goes, oh, I have a catering business. Come to work for me tomorrow. Gave me your address. Next day, I go down to Avenue A and I get off this subway and I think I'm stepping over dead people. But back then in 1980, there were a lot of junkies. And I hate to say it, but that's what the Lower East Side was tough. And so I knock on the door. She doesn't answer. Finally, somebody screams my name. I look up and she's, she throws down a monkey sock with a key in it. And I open up and these rickety stairs. And I'm like, where am I? I'm at Avenue A and First. And I get up, four flights up, I open this door. And man, it was amazing. There was this big loft. And there's like all these women in there from Belize, from Mexico. And she's Mexican by descent, Susanna. Susanna now lives in Oaxaca. She's got Miss Susanna Trilling. You're talking about Susanna Trilling. She has a cooking right. school called Seasons of My Heart. She has um, she had a PBS show on. Um, she, you know, she, I mean, she wrote a book with my friend Janice Dono, um, Seasons of My Heart, and working on another cookbook with Janice right now. Maybe that's not to be said, but that's true. It's happening. Um, but anyway, 
I started, I went to work for her and I fell in love. I flipped out. I couldn't believe how great it was. I stayed in, I stayed in graduate school for six months and I dropped out <laughs> and the rest is history. We catered. Oh my God. We catered for so many people. We catered for Mike Nichols during when he did heartburn or Whoopi on Broadway when, and Jack Nicholson came to the door and I answered the door. And I mean, I have so many stories from New York. We catered to the head of GM on his Fifth Avenue four-story home, a uh, breakfast in bed. I mean, we had we went to Westchester and catered weddings. We catered for all these movies, and I mean, I really got an amazing experience. And we catered MetLife's 75th anniversary. There was 2,000 people there on Madison Avenue between 23rd and 26th Street, and it was insane. We I ran the night shift five nights a week, trying to get all the food ready for all these 2000 people that showed up. So for me, catering was, you know, once you cater for 2000, what's the difference? You know, it doesn't really, actually it wasn't 2000, that was 20,000. That I came back from Memphis, that was for MetLife 75th, it was 20,000. When I came back to Memphis, we catered the mayor's birthday for 2000 at the uh, convention center. And we had four kitchens set up that we catered 500 in each corner. So we had kitchens in each corner that served 500 people. And they were like, Karen, how, how do you know how to cater for 2000? I went, well, when you cater for 20,000, what's the difference? I mean, it's just, it, it's hilarious. So the stories I have in New York, I mean, they're really hilarious. There's some great stories. But you opened um, Slim's there, which is totally different from the Slim's you had here. Slim. Yeah, Susanna moved to Perth for the America Cup. She was opening a Cajun restaurant. Go back. Susanna, when I met Susanna, we, she had seasons of my heart catering. Then she decided she wanted to open up a restaurant. And she opened up in Rick's 181 Lounge. Rick's 181 Lounge was on 8th Avenue. Those were the people that owned the Empire Diner. So they opened this place and they didn't really have any chefs. They didn't have a cook. They didn't know what to do, but they knew Susanna. So they called her. We said, yeah, we'll come in and do the restaurant. So we moved our catering business out of the loft into that restaurant. And so we were there for about two years. And then she got a call from another friend who wanted to open before Tribeca was Tribeca, wanted to open a Cajun restaurant. So we went to the World's Fair in 1984. And we went all the way down to the Appalachia Basin and we stodged. We cooked for free in New Iberia and all these places, learning Cajun food. And her love in New Orleans. She lived with Tony Garnier. He's a Cajun guy. When I met her, and he's Bob Dylan's bass player, has been for 30 years. He's hit the head of his band. And um, but so anyway, Tony and her split up and she moved in with me. She moved into my apartment. And we just, they called us Trixie and Dixie. Those were our nicknames in New York right. City. Every which one morning, were you? I always wondered. Oh, who Dixie. Was... Okay. <laughs> she was Trixie. And uh, yeah, we were quite well known down uh, in the Lower East Side and West Village, but we had some great times in the 80s. I, strangely enough, when I went to the New Orleans Jazz Fest after 15 straight years, I met some two guys from Manhattan. So this is a crazy story. I go to New York. I start working for Susanna. She decides she's moving to Perth for the America Cup after we had opened all these restaurants and we ended up getting out of these restaurants. And so she left in 84. I get this call from this guy who I'd met in New Orleans. And he was like, Karen, I want you to open up. We're opening up a bar at the corner of Bank and Washington. My friend's father owns the building and I want you to do the food. And I was like, cool. So I went and I was like, and I started my own catering business when Susanna left and it was called lunch catering because we catered to all the lunch, to all the fashion photographers. We catered lunches. So it was great. By the end of the 1230, we were done. And I had met a guy from Texas and him and I had lunch catering, Craig. He's passed away since then from AIDS, but he was a great guy. And um, so anyway, we had lunch catering and then we decided to open slims with these guys there were nine guys and me and it's still i still own it to this day uh david whose father owned it bought everybody out but me i don't know why he didn't buy me out i asked him to buy me out when i opened the beauty shop and he was like no 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 you're not getting bought out so i still have it to this day which is great because i get a lot of people i say i'll go have drinks or whatever and they just take care of them which is really fun 
And uh, David and I are still very, very close. And he still owns it. He runs it. And it's it's hilarious. It's been open since 1986. We opened on the bicentennial. We had a beer box that took one, fives, tens, and twenties. <laughs> we didn't have a cash register. And yeah, it was nuts. But you, so you move, but you were kind of going between Memphis and New York for a while. And then you could no longer fly when you were pregnant with your first Absolutely. son, right? So I met my husband who was from Memphis in New York City. Mm-hmm. That's when Phineas Newborn would always come up and play at Sweet Basil's at the Jazz oh, Great. Club. And everybody from Memphis would meet every time Phineas would play. And I ran back into Bob Carrier and I had met him. He was best friends with Bill Shepard. And I had known them before I left Memphis and had heard that he was up there. He was in the film business. Um, he was a lighting director and motion pictures. So him and I started dating. And about two or three years later, he decided to move back and become part of his family's business, API Photographers. So he moved back and I traveled back and forth every three weeks. And then he asked me, me to get married and I was like that's fine but I don't want to move back from New York City I wasn't ready to come home so we got <laughs> we decided we were going to get married and I just kept commuting and then I got pregnant and so I just kept a coat on for a long time until Northwest <laughs> Airlines were like Karen you've been traveling a long time pregnant open up that coat and I was like no man <laughs> and so they were like stay here, go to Memphis. You cannot fly anymore. And that's what happened. I moved back to Memphis. I was like, I got to do something. I started another roadside attraction. Um, I started it in June and of 1987. And, you know, the rest is sort of history. And then I basically that's 87 and 90. I decided I wanted to open a restaurant. 91, we opened Slim's. In 96, I did Miss Cordelia's, uh, another website to go in Miss Cordelia's, the first grocery store on Mud Island. I forgot and, about that. Yep. And yeah. then in, 19, in 2002, I decided to open the beauty shop. And in 2008, I decided to sell Slim's. And in 2003, I opened up the beauty shop general general store actually opened up the beauty shop general store when we opened up the beauty shop in 2002 and I needed a place to open that didn't need a vent hood <laughs> so I said I'll just open a sushi bar and all women were gonna you know I had back then I wanted mostly women doing sushi and um it was pretty fun and Nick women and Nick, Nick came after Nick came after he wasn't with me at the beginning um he did come after but um it was a lot of women and Marissa was with you, right? Marissa was with me. Mindy was with me. Then Marissa left and it was Mindy and Stacy. And then Stacy left and it was Nick. And then Nick left. And I mean, it was hilarious how we just, you know, we just kept retraining people, training people. And we were open for 10 years. And then they started selling sushi in the Exxon stations. And I was like, what is going on? And for some reason, it didn't sit with me well. I don't know why. I just was, I have an itch, you know, most people have it every seven years. I get it every six years. And I just, I think it's the painter in me, really, Jennifer. I just want to recreate something. I want to reinvent. I need a new project. And that's basically, so basically I I left out Cielo. So let's see. And that's right. That That's goes right. Back. So 96, right. we opened Miss Cordelia's. In 97, I opened Cielo in Molly Fontaine's, which is was my home. We moved out in 94. It took us two years to renovate it through the you know, National Historical Register and the whole thing, Landmarks Commission. And then we opened in 97. And 10 years later, in 2007, I decided to change that. I got bored with white tablecloths and so-called Caribbean French dining. And... I decided the the most the best thing about Cielo was the lounge. So I decided to just open a lounge, like just open it up as my house, as my living room. And so that was in 2007. So 2002, 2007, Molly Fontaine's up in 2008. I sold it roadside. 2012, I closed. Now 2008, you sold Slims. You didn't sell roadside. No, roadside's still good. 
it gets confusing. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, we, we get a little diagram going here. I'm um, not kidding. And then I opened the music club. Right. I told the sushi people, they were, I said, we're going to close. They were like, well, what do you mean we're closing? I said, don't worry, you'll have a job. We're going to open up a music club in three months. And that's what I did. I opened up our DKDC. I always wanted a music club. I lived at the Noodle Place. Well, the Noodle Place was, was part of, that's right. Noodle Doodle yeah. Doodle was the lunch part. Right. That you me oh, that's right. It was just lunch. And it was night. part of lunch. It was lunch of Do Sushi. That's oh. right. So in 2012, in December, we closed. 2013, in January, we literally opened back up as Bar DKDC. And we're still open, but we can't open because we don't have a stage. DK, the beauty of DK reminds me of the New York City bars that had live music or orchestras, like 30-piece orchestras in a place as little as DKDC. And those were the places that I loved to go in Manhattan. You know, that's what makes New York City New York City. It's not these huge, enormous restaurants or these huge, enormous, you know, venues. It was these little joints that were just so great. And people would just get together and, and you know, it's the pandemic. We can't do that now. <laughs> so, but you, know. you did at first. One thing you would do is have people come in and play music and uh, you could donate online. But you had, you had yes, quite a few that. No in. one was in there. That's right. right. The grifters and whoever wanted to use it. But when we decided to go ahead and expand the beauty shop into sure. back dough outside, into the beauty, into uh, DKDC, um, it, was, it was sort of hard to do that. So just just for listeners, all the restaurants, that, and including uh, Back Doma Yard, which is behind a bar DKDC in the beauty shop, they're all using the beauty shop menu right now. So Karen's got one menu. Are you going to go back to, are you going to separate these places again someday? Yes, we will so, separate them again someday. We'll go back to what they were. I mean, I have a, I have a lot of things that are just sitting there not being used, like a whole rotisserie outside. thought about bringing it to my house and using it. Um, but yeah, no, I, I want to go back showing the movies. I want to be able to go do the things that I started, but you know, until the vaccine is, until it's really, really solid, it's, it's not going to happen for me. I have thought about doing a DKC shake, shake baby production, so to speak, um, and trying to find a venue where I can put on some shows and, because, you know, Marcella, there were people that were almost like our, our house, our family. Right, right. You know, for sure. That, that was their jam. And, and you know, there are places that are having music now and, and good for them. I think it's great. They have big stages. They can, you know, separate the people on the stages. I just, I, I don't, you know, I think it is hard for bars to open right now. I'm glad they're open, but people tend to, <laughs> you know, have a few and you want to hug somebody and you want to, you know, it's just, it's just the way we are. It's a human nature. And I get it. I really get it. And we're trying really hard to, to keep ourselves healthy and, and to play by the rules and, you know, and I, and I wish and hope everybody else in the city does. I think about 85% are, I think you've got people, but, but I think there are, there are real offenders also who are yeah. not, and they're either going to, they're either going to get caught and it, you know, the health department says, if you're caught, we will shut you down for two weeks. And let's see if that happens or they'll just keep going and, um, you know, just we'll get, get away with it. it. We'll see. We'll see, see. I think the main thing is, is it, be, is it about being caught or is it really about people getting sick? And well, I think that's, that's the main thing. You know? I think it's about both. I think yeah. that I never knew I was such a rule player until it came to COVID. Yeah. And then I decided, boy, right. you got to follow these rules. That's right. I yeah. want to follow the rules. I don't, you know, knock on wood, we've been very, very lucky, but it can happen to anybody and any, any restaurant, anybody. And I think a lot of it has to do with my staff has been with me a long time, Jennifer. And, you know, I, I hate to say I know where they go, but I have to, I really respect and I have a lot of, there's a lot of loyalty and love and family, that familiar, that family nurturing to know that when you leave work, you're not going out to 
you know, see a band and hang out and, and then coming back to work the next day and not letting anybody know, Hey, you know, I went out. If they do that, they're calling me and saying, okay, I went out, I'm going to get tested. I'm like, okay, that's good. So it's, it's that trust thing. We have to have that. My kitchen crew is solid. It's, you know, they've been with me a long, long, long time. Well, you have to have it. You've got to have a circle of trust and whoever you're around. And, and then if, when you have to be out, you have to be as far away and you have to, there, there's an app and I'm going to find it. I'm going to put it in the little uh, lead in that I write to this podcast. I just came across it this weekend. It shows how to lower your risk. Let's say you want to go to a restaurant. How many people will be in that restaurant? You tell it how many people will be there, how long you'll be there, blah, 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 your zip code. And it'll give you what your, is this low risk, high risk, you know, medium risk. It it is interesting. And it's, it's uh, something Brown university school of public health, I think. But then it, um, then you want to see how to lower your risk and it lets you go back and, okay, so you put on a mask, how many other people will have on a mask or can you shorten your stay and this kind of thing until you can get it down. And let me tell you, anytime you just, just put on the mask, that's basically what it is. Put on the mask and it just goes back down into the green or close to it for almost any activity. So, I'm a firm believer. I, I am too. Me too. I've yeah. never seen you without yours and it doesn't fall below your nose. You do a great job. No, it's thank always you. there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I hate when they're below people's noses. Oh, I the ones that keep slipping down. I'm like, dude, they don't fit you. Get something new on there. <laughs> Try something different. I know. And then some, I mean, sometimes you can tell it's on purpose, but sometimes, you know, it's exactly. just falling. No, it is. It does happen. You know, I mean, I respect those people. I mean, I feel bad. But with those metal things around your nose, it will work. You know, right. you do have they will. Karen, thank you. Thanks. Absolutely. I mean, a lot for coming and just for thank you for everything that you do for Memphis. You really just. Thanks, and thank you for everything you do, because you have wow. kept all, all of us up to date and you've been so good with keeping up with us and and calling and and making sure everybody's okay and seeing how we're all doing as chefs and restaurateurs and really we couldn't have done it without you either you should well, know. I, that is just so kind it almost brings me to tears y'all are the ones working and i am just happy to tell anybody what you're doing um thanks for coming. thank you baby have a great week In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.